everyone, Art Ekman along with David Bailey, and welcome to Gatorback Cycle Park in Gainesville, Florida, for the opening round of the AMA Motocross National Outdoor Season. Our defending 125 champion, not looking too good right now, David. Well, I guess he's got some kind of flu, and he's just trying to get as much sleep as he can get. He probably can't believe he's got to go out there in a few minutes and ride as hard as he can for a half hour. Ricky Carmichael on the left in his first full year of motocross. He cut his teeth on this gator back bike as an amateur. Jeff Stanton preparing things as we take a look at the race format. Two motos, 30 minutes each, plus two laps. 40 riders at the starting gate. Our Suzuki track map shows a lot of turns, but we'd need a relief map to show what Gatorback is known for, David, elevation. It's a changes. lot of elevation, yeah. yep. That start is flat up on top, a lot of sand, but the best way to show you is once the race gets underway, Dave Coombs came down here, the promoter of High Point, and gave this track a facelift. Okay, we're set to go for moto number one of the 125s. Number 15 is Craig. He gets the good jump on Lampson, but it is number seven, the Yamaha of Kevin Windham getting the whole shot. Kevin Windham to the inside, you see him there. Number 15, Michael Craig making a challenge. Number 45 is Willow. Then it's LaRusso out of Massachusetts. He had a great start, of course, at Southwick last year. LaRusso from that area, but now he's down in Florida. Look at the fine lead that Windham has already acquired on Craig. Now you get a chance to see that elevation we talked about as they drop into the pit and come up back up top. This is one of the new sections, a little chicane here. Then a tricky little section up the hill before they head into the back. Another big plateau to try to alleviate these guys from breaking wheels from jumping off that ski jump last year. Kevin Windham did not race Gator back last year, recovering from a broken collarbone, but he ended up on the season second in points. Showing great speed now. There's Tony LaRusso. What a fine start on the Suzuki. Start makes all the difference, too. Remember last year, he led Southwick for a little while. And if you can stay up front in the first few laps, even if you get tired and start to fade, chances of staying in the top 10 are pretty good. Number 45, Jeff Willow, Honda of Troy. There's Wyndham once again, number seven, with a great start here in moto number one of the 125s. Wyndham went over the bars in 1995 and had a horrible time here at the Gatorback Park. And he comes into this race with a tweaked ankle. Lampson trying to recover from the slow start. He's got number 70 right there, Ricky Carmichael, right behind him, coming off his first Supercross win in Atlanta last week. And both these guys got the speed and worked their way to the front. I'd be anxious to see if Carmichael can hang with him, though. Bar to bar, Lammy makes the pass on Tim Ferry, a native Floridian. And look at Ferry coming right back into the action. Well, the first lap, the track's changed quite a bit. You can see Lamps' mechanic there getting ready to give him a split, let him know probably how much how far down he is to the leader of Wyndham. Mike Gossler chomping on that gum as Lampson tries to weed through the pack. Here's our leader, Kevin Wyndham. Then it's Michael Craig, LaRusso in third. This section's still very smooth up top. They've tried to keep that a lot smoother because the very beginning, coming off the start, if they leave that rough, everybody together like that as fast as they're going chance of somebody going down and starting to pile up is pretty good so with the track smoother this year I don't see a great many ruts does it make it a faster race it's definitely a fast pace right now but the track through the day you can see it's getting rough through there it's gonna get a lot rougher in places especially once the 250s get out there 37 Tony LaRusso he's looking smart in third place going up that difficult challenging new portion of the track you got to get a good momentum up the top of that hill. Lampson coming through there trying to carry the front wheel over that third little jump. It's a stair step up the hill. And if you don't get a good drive up that, you can't jump all the way to the downside of that ski jump. Look at number 24, Robbie Raynard. The rear end bouncing around, but he's keeping his cool. Raynard, well, he cut his teeth like Carmichael on the skater back park, and uh, he's had a couple of good times here. Actually won the overall a couple of years ago here. Raynard keeping the pressure on LaRusso. I think they're in the beginning of this uh, day, while the track's still smooth, everyone's pretty much capable of running the same pace. On a little bit more technical track, or later in the day when it's rougher, I think the talent of Rainer would probably carry him past LaRusso a little sooner. And, too, I would imagine, David, on a track that has so many turns, it gets a little one line. It does here and there, but it's a long track. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, Rainer. A terrific clean pass on LaRusso. Look out for Robbie Raynard. He's got the speed to catch our leaders, Michael Craig and Kevin Windham. Raynard looking like he's riding pretty good right now. He just turned on a dime at the top of that new section, and he's not that far behind the leaders. It's, it's always inspiring when you can see him. This is another new section they have, a new double jump, just at the end of that long straightaway after the finish. 
right in front of uh, the majority of fans. A new record crowd here at Gatorback as we just continue to set attendance records everywhere these guys go. Robbie Raynard on the Primal Honda. LaRusso in fourth, but look at who has come up to fifth place, Steve Lampson. Can Ricky Carmichael come with him as we take a look at our field summary with Wyndham, our leader? We'll be back to Gatorback Park in a minute. Back Park, Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davy Coombs bringing you the action of the opening round of the outdoor motocross season. Steve Lampson, number one, the defending champion, trying to get back into the competitive mix. Oh, he's charging his way to the front, but earlier he had to go to sleep in the semi for a while. Everyone just had to leave him alone. He's just operating on very little, if any, energy at all from being sick, and he's just going to have to try to salvage something out of this day and get healthy for Hangtown. Here's our leader, Kevin Windham. He shares the 125 Western Supercross points lead with Robbie Raynard, who's currently in third. But Lampson right now, who's trying to recover from a, a horrible start on the Supercross season, he's trying to move up. Well, this is the class where Honda really expects him to do well, where he has the confidence. I talked to Stanton, and he just says, you know, if the guy could line up on the starting line of the Supercross feeling like he does when he does the 125 Nationals, he'd win every race. He's got so much confidence, and right now I don't see any effects of him being sick at all. It looks like he's charging hard. They call it adrenaline, I think, is what he's running on right now. Steve Lampson, not only defending champion, but two-time 125 defending champion. He's not that far away from the leaders, and right now, as long as he's still feeling good, he's got to go for it. You can see it. He's going around that corner faster than anybody I've seen so far, using the berm, trying to keep his momentum up. Well, we've got some well-known names. Sheik, Hengry, Ron Cotta, Casey Johnson. They're not even close to the top five. Here comes Ricky Carmichael in sixth place, trying to come right with Steve Lampson to the front. Went around Willow right there off that plateau, pulled a tear off. Looks like he's got a great rhythm right now. Boy, this is the kind of track that the 125s really have to wind it out. Here comes Craig making a move, as you saw, on our leader, Kevin Windham. He's getting closer as we switch back to Ricky Carmichael. Well, it's his first national. It looks like he's on pit. Well, that, not counting last year, but his first national 97 of the whole season. And he's on pace with the leaders right now. And he's got a lot of experience here at Gainesville as an amateur. Absolutely. In fact, he broke Kevin Windham's record for the number of amateur titles. And many of those came right here on this very difficult track. They're starting to utilize a little ruck now, starting to form, as you mentioned, David Bailey, earlier. That's a place where Carmichael will really shine, too, because he can lay that bike into that rut, and he doesn't have his leg in the way because he's a little shorter than everyone else. Well, that's one of the fascinating things I find about motocross is a similar area on the track and the different styles that uh, the various riders use in getting through it. Well, you'll see a completely different style from the leader, Wyndham. You see he'll stand up a lot more through some of the sweepers, and then Carmichael will sit down a lot more. A lot depends on the style of soil that's underneath them. The angle of the turn as well, as you see Lampson sitting down on that short turn and then getting right back up. Lampson probably wishes he could go somewhere and sit down for the rest of the day. Yeah, he's not way, feeling good. The way he looked before the start of that first moto, I've been that way before. You're sick, and it's weird. Some days that you have your best ride like that because you're really relaxed. You don't put a lot of pressure on yourself, and you go out there, and everything just comes together. With these elevation changes, up and down we go. Lampson tries to show a wheel on the inside to LaRusso. Has to take that rut, though, around the corner. Well, champion, but... Lampson, bar to bar, comes around the corner in the lead. Great move by Lammy. Well, that's the same place that Raynard went by LaRusso a little earlier, a little, little bit more aggressive than that. Lampson set that pass up a little sooner, was a little closer to him as he entered that corner and was able to make an easy pass. One thing about a moto now in motocross, you've got time if you get a bad start to move back up through the field. 30 minutes of energy draining action from Gator Back Park. And not much of a rest in 30 more minutes. <laughs> and the track's rougher, it's a little hotter, and you have less energy because you've already expended yourself once. Our leader leaning up over the pliers, Kevin Windham. That's that section I talked about. Where they, right after the new section, a little chicane, they get up the hill. If they don't get enough speed, that's what happens. You come up a little short on that jump. You didn't quite make it to the downside. Look at Craig. And Robbie Raynard in third. One, two, and three. We've got a battle on our hands now for the lead. Kevin Windham coming into the race with a little tweaked ankle. He could be uh, feeling the effects of it on this rough track. Well, anytime you come into a race and you haven't been able to ride 
much during the week, especially for the first race, where you really don't know what to expect. The pressure's a little higher. Robbie Rayner's starting to put the heat on. Michael Craig for second place. Yeah, you can see that it looks like it's starting to affect uh, Wyndham a little bit. He's just not quite as sharp as he was early in the race. He could be suffering from arm pump right now, or now that he's got these guys on his tail from a few mistakes, they're putting the pressure on him, and that's making him nervous, and they can see that he's making mistakes. Seems like it won't be long before they can move around him. Michael Craig, an impressive start on the motocross season for Michael. Well, it's, it's good so far. You see how slick it is right there. His front end was washing out right before that jump, but... The thing with Craig is that at any point he can just go off the track into the crowd or, or just wad it up over some double jump. I mean, and he knows it too. He laughs about it. We've talked about it. And as long as he stays on two wheels, he's fast. It looks like he's got a great chance to win this moto. There was a certain amount of sarcasm in that comment about going <laughs> into the crowd. Let's not get those who don't know about it too excited because the crowd is very close. And that's one of the great thing about motocross action. The crowd can get right up there and look into their eyes. They don't want to look into Craig's too close. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Red is starting to put the pressure now on Michael Craig, and both of them are going after number seven, the team Yamaha rider Kevin Windham. In the lead here in Moto One. Whoa, look at him slide in the upper portion before they go back down into the pit. There you see Wyndham again standing up all the way through that sweeper. He's scrubbing off a little speed there. It went a little wide. Lamps are now in fourth with Ricky Carmichael. Those two are on the move as we have a battle out front, a three-way battle for the lead. We'll be back. Are you ready for more action, more danger, more impact? Well, your wait is over. The hottest, most intense. Three crash impact of crash impact two. 70 minutes of explosive, heart stopping crash action. You have to see to believe. All new crashes from Superbox, Harley Suit, Drag Race, Stunt Car, Sprint Car, Supercross, Andy Car, Flat Track, and more. All jam packed on two tapes for only $19.95. Order now and get absolutely free. The new Extreme Sports Virtual Reality featuring insane extreme sports from around the world like you've never seen before. You'll get the all-new Crash Impact 2 plus the Extreme Sports Video free. Three tips that'll blow you away. Guaranteed on your money back. To order, call 1-800-784-3311. That's 1-800-784-3311. Or send $19.95 plus $5.95 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. p.m. tonight, Monday through Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 8, only on ESPN2. Welcome back to Gator Back Park. Our Deckman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs were taking a look at the first moto for 125 action, and what a great moto it is. Our leader, Kevin Windham, number seven. Michael Craig is right on his tail. Robbie Raynard not far behind. Steve Lampson and Ricky Carmichael on the move in fourth and fifth. Whoa. Little mistake again by Windham. He's just a uh, wounded duck right now. He looks like his rhythm is, something's gone wrong. Uh, like I said before, uh, it's gotta be arm pump or something because due to the fact he wasn't able to ride that much this week. Michael Craig having to put on the brakes, picking his spot now to try to take the advantage and make the pass on this very rough and rugged track. Both uh, Craig and Raynard right there, they kind of blew it. Craig came up short on that double and Raynard didn't even go for it. So Wyndham again has got a little breathing room. Brainerd looks like he's playing the waiting game. Down is Nathan Ramsey, number 38. Well, that looks like a tough place to go down, too. Nathan a little worse for wear as he's got to pull that bike up and get back into it now. Well, he's going to drop a lot of places. Looks like he's not going to get going too quick. This has got to be one of the roughest sports around. Conditioning playing a big part as we get past the middle point of this race. Kevin Windham being pressured by number 15, Honda of Troy's Michael Craig. On the inside, Craig makes the move. Good clean pass. That was smart, very smart. He set that whole thing up coming down that sweeper. Knew he had the momentum. Here's another look. Cuts out of that berm a little early. Just takes a shorter distance. Goes right in front of Wyndham. Nothing Kevin could do about it. What's it like jumping out of the berm and going on the flat like that? Well, you gotta 
pick the bike up just a little bit straighter because when you're laid over in the berm, you get good traction. Then you hit the flat ground and it wants to slide out from you. But Craig did a nice job of controlling that. He hit that berm a little harder so he could bounce out of it and make that pass. Wyndham's really not making a play to get back up on Michael Craig. Can he hold off Robbie Raynard? Let's go to Davey Combs with Craig's mechanic. Okay, thanks, our down here with Dean Baker. Dean, your rider knocked off Wyndham. He's got the lead. Tell him to keep going or start pacing himself. Uh, well, we got to tell him to keep going because it's a long race, and uh, none of these guys are going to back off. But, uh, man, the guy's always been a great Supercross rider. He's got a lot of talent, but uh, it seems like he wants an outdoor wins more than anything right now. Craig, a good example of where starting the motocross season before the Supercross season is over is a nice refreshing change. Not doing as well as expected in the Supercross year after coming off a very fine off-season over in Europe. The only two-time winner on the World Supercross Tour, number 15, Michael Craig. When I heard he was riding the 125s again, I was like, again? But, man, they, the Honda of Troy team has really positioned their guys where they feel like they're in the best places, and it's like they made the right choice so far with Craig in the lead. Robbie Rader, is he fast on this track or what? He's got great confidence. He's won here many, many times as an amateur. He's in third place, as you see. He's looking good, too. His momentum is fast through that sweeper. His lines are good. It looks like he's conserving energy. He's another one of those guys, kind of like Wyndham. It doesn't look like he's trying very hard, but he's going fast. This is one track that would make an adjustment to the 250s very interesting, because the 125, in order to get up the elevation changes, you wind it all the way out. Yeah, you got as much power as you can get out of these 125s. The top 10 guys have all got about the same power, and it just makes it so much more difficult in this class. You make a mistake, and it takes so long to make that time back up, if you ever can. But these guys are just tapped everywhere. Wyndham slowing his pace now after losing the lead to Michael Craig. Craig has just taken off. He's He said adios, goodbye. Right now, the battle's here for second place. Well, Craig has just got a good pace going. He wants to continue with with that flow and perhaps recognize that something's gone wrong with Wyndham. He's gotten tight, not flowing anymore, and if he holds up Raynard a little while, well, that's just a bonus. Down in the pits and up and down we go on this great Gatorback Park. And I've never seen so many fans at this park. Crowd's really getting into it, too. And as a rider, it's noisy out there, but you can hear the crowd, especially when you get in a tight battle. As soon as some guy starts catching you or jumping something that you're not jumping, the crowd gets into it. You can tell. Here comes Raynard, bar to bar. Wyndham has the advantage there. Oh, look at that. What a gutsy move by Robbie Raynard. One foot off the peg. Here's another look. Raynard pushed Wyndham into that corner, forced him wide. Then he sets him up, squares across the inside. Well, that was uh, a little risky there because he almost took the front wheel of Wyndham just before that drop away. And what you can't see is just at the edge of the racetrack is a lot of rock in that quarry. If those guys would end up over there, that would have been bad news. Raynard looking like uh, he did back in 95 when that 3-1 gave him the win here at Gatorback Park. Robbie Raynard has always been a very talented rider. It's been the injury bug that has been a hamper to his career. Michael Craig still leads, pulling a good lead on Raynard, Wyndham, Lampson, and Carmichael. We'll be back with more 125 action in a moment. Michael Craig, in fact, he's got quite a lead as we look back at the action with Wyndham trying to hold off the defending champion, Steve Lampson. Lammy number one. Back in the 125 ranks after 250 action. Look at Carmichael, number 70 on the move. Ricky Carmichael, oh, almost lost it there in a three-way battle. There's been a lot of focus on the battle between Wyndham and Lampson for this title, but the new kid on the block, Carmichael's putting pressure on both of them. That's gotta be a thrill, and Davies worked his way over to Wyndham's mechanic. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Steve. We're back down here with Allie. Allie, what's up with Kevin? It looks like he's starting to lose his momentum or something. I don't know. Uh, he hadn't got to ride it all this week. He went down on Monday and hurt his ankle, and he rode for the first time on Friday. So I don't know. Maybe he's just riding a little tight, or maybe he's just waiting to start charging at the end, or his ankle may be hurting him. Well, it looks like Allie's as uncertain as we are about what's going on with Wyndham. And that's the thing about motocross, you're out there on your own, you see all the headsets, but those are just in the mechanics there. There's no communication from the rider to the mechanics. 
Steve Lampson making his move on Kevin Windham. So the defending champion is making quite a spirited effort here in the first moto of 125 action on a gorgeous day in Gainesville. Well, both Wyndham and Lampson have coming into this race with problems. Of course, Lampson's sick. Wyndham, not really sure what. No, he hasn't been able to ride a lot during the week. And both of them putting in pretty good rides, but Wyndham seems to be the one fading right now. Here comes Ricky Carmichael from the rear as well. You know, you think of how much the legs have to absorb, acting almost like pistons at times on motocross, but that ankle is a real big key. Well, uh, I've had bad ankles. Hannah had bad ankles. That's why he used to wear those Scott boots. He couldn't feel a thing in those, but he had to protect his ankles. Those are like wearing a cast. And he, your ankle, you see these guys riding on the balls of their feet. You see him putting their feet down. Lampson just dabbed his foot on the ground. Imagine if your ankle is sore. You, you don't want to put your foot down. Therefore, you have to ride a lot more tentative. Kevin Windham's situation now as he tries to hold off the 17-year-old. Carmichael from Florida has raced so many times here, has won so many times here in the amateur ranks, breaking Kevin Windham's amateur records. Kevin Windham on the inside, Ricky Carmichael, number 70, looking for the best opportunity to make the pass. Windham sweeping a little bit too far and an easy move for Ricky Carmichael. Well, that seemed inevitable. The way these guys caught up to him and put the pressure on and the way it seems like, here's another look, it's pretty much after Carmichael had set it up, he just set him up to the inside and made a little shorter distance to the next corner and cut him off. We take a look now at Robbie Raynard in second place. He's getting some heat from Steve Lampson. Lampson has come out of nowhere. What great riding by this young man who has come to Gainesville, Florida, not feeling up to par. As you said earlier, not only adrenaline, but sometimes you run a pretty good race, concentrating. Well, it's it's what you believe you're capable of. And Steve Lampson, when he lines up this 125 national championship, he just believes he can win. Stanton's told me that. And uh, he's proven it right now. He's just carving through these guys like they aren't even there. Interesting. Ricky Carmichael choosing the same line as Steve Lampson, which is different from the line of Robbie Raynard. Raynard went for the rut. The other two stayed up on top. And Carmichael cut it a little close there. He jumped that plateau and just clipped that little pile there where they have the inside corner marker. Raynard in second place. Davies with his mechanic, Tom Wallace. Tom, we just saw Robbie go through. There's three laps to go. Do you think he's getting tired or is he just saving a little bit? Uh, I think he's getting tired, but right now the most important thing is to focus on not crashing and getting a result. You know, if he can stay in front of Carmichael, even if Lampson passes him and get three Hondas on the podium, that'd be awesome. Raynard holding back now. Steve Lampson, Lammy, has really been moving well up through the pack after a slow start here in moto number one of the 125s. Lampson to the inside. Raynard cannot hold him off. A great move. That was smart. Lampson just carried all his momentum, took him right in front of him. He just cut the line away from Raynard, and Carmichael was right there watching. Raynard trying to not let Lampson get off the hook, but what acceleration by Lampson. Michael Craig with about a 15-second Five wins at Gainesville National. George Holland, he did it three years in a row. Lampson trying for two wins in a row here at Gator Back. Only one other rider has two wins in a row, and that's Mike Kodrowski. 1989, MK went on for the 125 title at that time. Look at this move by Carmichael. Passing Robbie Raynard. Ricky Carmichael has followed the footsteps of Steve Lampson. He's on a roll. Look at him right here. He comes out of that corner on the inside. Raynard just looks over like, where'd you come from? Shakes his head. I don't know if he's a little irritated with that or not, but there's nothing he could do about it. McCarmichael with a much better line there. Oh, and Michael Craig has gone down. He had a huge lead, and now our entire order is different. Steve Lampson, Ricky Carmichael, Robbie Raynard, and then Michael Craig. Look how close they all are. The people are getting into it because this is still a great battle. Oh, and Carmichael wants to make a move on Steve Lampson, that's for sure. Lammy's got to have a big boost of confidence, though. How about the energy? He came into the race not feeling well, had to drive up through the pack. Now he's got the lead. Well, at least he doesn't have to go up and try to catch Craig, so that's one plus, but he's got three guys that are fast, just as fast as he is maybe, breathing down his neck at the very end of this race when physical fitness is really going to play a part, so it's not going to be easy for Steve. 
Well, when I, I take a look at Steve Lampson, I've got to go back to the time where he was down by something like 60 points in the 125 motocross scene after doing poorly and getting injured early in the year, some DNFs, and then came back to win the title in the last moto at Steel City. It's a tough memory for Ryan Hughes, who became a fan favorite at that time because of his actions of pushing his bike across the finish line and collapsing but losing the title. Carmichael with composure, going over that jump, clearing his vision, staying close to the leader. He stayed there the whole time. He's still close. There's been a couple of times where Lampson's got away from him a little bit, and he's been able to close that gap. So he's got the speed. Maybe he's got something a little up his sleeve for the end of this moto, and the crowd's got to be on his side, too. He's from Florida, and he's had a lot of good results here. Everyone knows who he is. The 14 years of Gator back for 125 action. Only three times the winner of this race has gone on to the 125 title. Once, of course, we mentioned was Kodrowski. Lampson was the other one last year. Only one other rider. You remember? Can't think of it. During your day, Jeff Ward. That's right. Jeff's had some good races here. Plus, Nin he raced for about 50 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that was back when he was young. 1984. Mike Gosler on the right. Steve Lampson's mechanic has been with him a long time. They really trust each other. Lammy is out in front for the lead. Ricky Carmichael. We'll see how he wants to play it. This is his first full season as a pro motocrosser. Well, everything I've seen from Carmichael so far has been very aggressive and go for broke. First supercross he ever rode. It looked like he got the whole shot, kept right on going right off the track and crashed <laughs> in the first turn. So he's not afraid to take a chance. And this crowd, the momentum, the adrenaline, everything here, he's not going to hold back at all. Riding that pro circuit Kawasaki. Steve Lampson, though, is been known not to crack under pressure when he's leading. He's a good leading rider, and especially on a final lap like this. Time is running out on Ricky Carmichael. Feeling confident, I think, is Mike Gosler, but he knows anything could happen on a final lap. Steve Lampson, only a few turns away from the checkered flag. Little shaky line right there. He hasn't been going there the whole race, but he holds on. A bike length between the two, first and second. Ricky Carmichael has to feel good about his first ride, though. No, I think he's happy. Laps and Carmichael. Raynard third. A good ride for him. Michael Craig after the crash dropping to fourth. LaRusso, number six. Let's go down to Davey. All right, thanks, Art. I'm down here with Steve Lamps. He's just going off off that first moto win. Didn't see what happened from our end, but it looks like Craig made a mistake with about white flag. Steve, what happened? Um, looks like Craig Craig messed up back in the before the tabletop over there. It looked like he got off. I seen the yellow flag, and I'm all, no, it can't be him, but it was, you know, so uh, made it good for us, or for me and, and uh, Ricky, so. You didn't have the start some of those other guys did, but you never stopped charging, but same time right with you, Ricky Carmichael. That surprised you? Yeah, no, actually not. I knew he was going to be up there, and uh, I knew how he's ride this track, and he rides it fast. And uh, But I was happy to win the moto. I just want to survive, and uh, I'm in one piece for the second moto. Ricky Carmichael, even though he's 17, saying, look out, guys. I'm on your tail. Let's go back to Davey. Ricky, congratulations. I think you surprised a lot of people out there today. Well, yeah. Uh, I got an okay start, and just me and Lammy caught up through the pack. I guess a couple people got tired and allowed us to... Uh, you know, catch up, and Michael Ray crashed on the, like, two laps ago, and Abel, me, and Lammy to get one and two, and I charged the last moto. He's just super fast. Yeah. Now, was that a plan when you saw Lampson right in front of you? Did you say, I'm going to attach myself to this guy who knows what he's doing, or is he just going as fast as you are? Well, I knew if we got together that, you know, we could come up through the pack, because in practice, I think we're the fastest guys, and I'm stoked for my finish, and I'm just going to try to do the same in the second moto. Well, if he pushes that hard, should win the second moto. Look out, he's got the overall. We'll be back with moto number two in a moment. Now you can walk into your Honda dealer and ride off on a champion. The CBR 600 F3. Walk in and ride off on the best 600 sport bike. Walk in soon and ride off with a custom watch. The Honda Ride Off ends May 31st. Ten cents may not look like much to you, but sign up for Sprint Sense Long Distance now, and you'll be amazed at what this little dime can do. Every time I get another dime, I think about calling my agent for just ten cents a minute. So what if he puts me on hold? Barb, your agent's on the phone. Coming. Yes. Funny. 
Ever since I got Sprint's Dime a Minute rate, I can call anywhere in the country and know exactly what I'm paying every month. <laughs> Nothing surprises me. Hi. Suddenly, it all makes sense. I work all day, so with 10 cents a minute nights and weekends, I can give myself the green light to talk. Call for Sprint Sense now, and you'll pay just 10 cents a minute at the times you call most. Of course, I could pay more at those times, but that wouldn't make sense. To me, the biggest bonus is I get 10% cash back. That's cool. With Sprint Sense, it all makes sense. See for yourself. Call now, 1-800-621-7491. Now, the bike you want equals big time bucks, correct? Incorrect. Do the math. During Suzuki Fest 97, get up to $500 in Suzuki accessories free with a selected Suzuki. Like the awesome GSX R1100. You also get free accessories with the Katana 600 and 750 and the RF900R. And choose from financing options like zero down and 9.9% APR on selected models. But hurry, Suzuki Fest won't last. So, you plus Suzuki equals. Oh, come on, add it up. AMA Motocross on ESPN2 is being brought to you by Motorcycle Mechanics Institute, MMI, quality training for the motorcycle industry. Not much time between motos here for the 125. The defending champion number one, Steve Lampson, not feeling well, very sick before the event got underway. Dean Baker, Michael Craig's mechanic, trying to get circulation in the forearm. The preliminary report on Michael Craig, when he went down in the lead in moto number one, he broke a bone in the top of his hand. Sarah Stanton, Jeff Stanton's wife, taped it up as tight as he, she possibly could. And he's back in the running now for points. It'll be interesting to see how these riding wounded will fare here in moto number two. Another 30 minutes of exhaustive athletic endeavor. On the inside, whoa, look at this, number 15, Michael Craig's got the whole shot. Well, if you're hurting, that's a good place to start from. Going down on the inside, a domino effect. Jeffrey Willow, Sean Perolio, and Tim Ferry. Ferry having an awful time in the first moto. No points at all. Now he's starting from the back of the pack again. Ricky Carmichael has taken the lead. Number 70. There's Kevin Windham, number seven, with another good start for Kevin. But Ricky Carmichael, who took second place in the first moto, Craig is in third, number 15. What a symbol of confidence, too, for Carmichael. He came up that big uphill, hit the double jump, just laid it sideways in the air. He's very comfortable out there, and the way he rode the first moto, having charged from the back, following the national champion being right on his tail at the finish, he knows he's as fast as these guys. Now that he's got the whole shot, Lampson's nowhere in sight, should be able to win this moto. Where's Lampson? Got a very slow start out of the gate as Michael Craig just took off without him. Here we've got Ricky Carmichael, number 70. We've told you he's very familiar with this track. In the 96 Mini O's, for instance, he won both the 125s and the 250s, led every lap for the four motos except the opening lap of the 250 moto. That's amazing. Anybody that's questioning whether this gets big enough to ride a 125, he can ride a 250, too. He's amazing. Carmichael slipping and sliding a little bit that time. Can he hold on to the lead? Right now, he's extending the lead. Well, it'll be interesting to see now if Wyndham has gotten things sorted out between motos, too, because he looked so good in the early laps of the first moto. The word we now have is it was a, a bad case of arm pump. He didn't have much time to practice all week, so physically, he just wasn't up to it. Well, the way arm pump usually works is each time you go out there, it gets a little bit better. Usually, uh, you go out and practice. The first practice session is real bad. The next one is a little bit better and then by the first moto a little bit better and each time it keeps getting better you get more relaxed and comfortable and if that arm pump doesn't come back and get him again this moto he should be able to keep the pressure on Carmichael he's just as fast what a great start for Ricky Carmichael Michael Craig a courageous performance if the information we received is correct he's riding with a broken hand there you have Steve Lampson in seventh place considering the last moto that's not bad for Steve Lampson and the way he weeded himself up through the field and took over, 
And one, moto number one. Ricky Carmichael might be a little tougher to catch, though, out in front. Well, that's the thing. See, Carmichael was behind Lamps in the first moto. They started at about the same place, worked their way to the front. So he's proven he can do that. But Wyndham, I got to think, is a little bit more comfortable this moto than he was in the first. Boy, and when you Carmichael's get up that, out front. Uh, yeah, when you get up in that upper section, David, you can hear the continuous cheering of the fans. That must be a great feeling for a rider. Oh, look at the way Carmichael got over that jump. Just Whoa. pitched the back end out. He's actually jumping across over the inside corner marker. Pretty clever. Lampson trying to catch up with Michael Craig, number 15. Michael Craig taking it a little more easy as the front two start to slip away. Casey Johnson. Putting a little pressure on his teammate Decker. Well, both these guys are capable of running out front in the first moto, bad starts, but it's got to give them a lot of encouragement to know that they're a new kid on the block, ride the same bike. Carmichael is doing so well in the first moto. It makes you understand that bike's capable of doing the job, and with better starts, they should be up there this time. Deegan is behind the two Kawasaki's. Deegan with a win on the Supercross circuit this year. It was Deegan who T-boned Decker after Decker got a hole shot here a couple of years ago. Decker winding up in 38. Deegan going on for a much better placement, but number 28 starting to put the pressure on. Here comes Lampson. Lampson right behind Deegan. Lampson making a run to get up there before the leaders get away from them. Well, that's the signal he'll be getting when he comes to the mechanics area, how much time he's losing to Carmichael. That's the only interval they really care about right now because that's the overall. Decker. Johnson. Deegan and Lampson and Lammy is being really slowed down. Look at that right there. He just looked like he had an inside line to get around Deegan. And Deegan got a little sideways, came over in front. Look at Lampson. That's a change his line again right there. The overall is on the line as Lampson finally gets by Deegan. He's got the two Kawasaki's now as his next target. They just so happen to be the teammates of the guy that's out front with that overall opportunity. Oh, you don't think anything's playing out here, do you? I'm not saying it. <laughs> Carmichael, Wyndham, Craig, our top three. We'll be back after these words. It's in a jar, in the car, in a drawer, on the floor. It's all over the place. So where's your loose change? Well, it's time to cash in those coins with the Money Wrapper, the automated coin machine that sorts, stacks, counts, and wraps your loose change in one easy step. Just place the coin wrappers in the Money Wrapper and drop in a handful of loose change. The Money Wrapper switches on automatically, spinning and separating the coins, then sending them down the chute to be sorted. Pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters all drop into their own removable tubes at a rate of hundreds of coins per minute automatically stacked counted and all wrapped up when you're done your money wrapper shuts off by itself and when you're ready to cash in simply pull the lever and start piling up those neat rolls of counted wrapped coins so don't throw your loose change away get it growing today the money wrapper it makes perfect sense Call 1-800-207-5959 to order your money wrapper for $24.95 plus $5.95 shipping or send check or money order to the address on your screen Miss America There she is, Miss America Your ideal She'll take the town by storm With her all-American form There she is, walking on air She is, fair's the fair The NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament First round coverage Friday at 6 and 12.30 Only on ESPN2 Time now for this week's Honda riding tip. We're going to take a look at the big elevator jump here in Gainesville, the different techniques. McGrath keeping that front end low, lands just at the top. He's able to apply both brakes at the same time and gets stopped quick. Jeff Emig getting a good run at it, staying squatted down. You see he lifts his body, try to get that lift. He also taps the brake in the air. He recognized the front end was a little too high, and by tapping that rear brake, it drops the front end. Larry Ward. Doesn't need that rear brake, but his foot was right there just in case. Back to the action at Gainesville, Florida. Gatorback Cycle Park. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs working the pit area with the mechanics. As we take a look at the defending champion, he's getting a challenge from his teammate, Scott Sheik, number 29. That's all Steve Lampson needs now. As he was trying to catch up to be competitive after winning the first moto, getting a slow start here in moto number two, trying to get back up for that overall victory. And now here comes Scott Sheik. 
Sheik having some problems in the first moto went down. He's trying to rectify his performance to his bosses. Looks like he's doing a pretty good job of it, and it's kind of odd. I think it's way too early in the season, obviously, the first round for any kind of team orders. But uh, they're going to let Sheik run. And it looks to me like the pace that he's got, the way he caught these guys, he's going to get around them both. Decker, number 141. Lampson will be the first to try, probably. Yes, cuts him inside. Block pass underway. Sheik will now have the clear opportunity. Sheik, one of the eye-openers of the 96 season, was a 3-3 and a second overall here at Gatorback. He was very quick in the corners, quicker than anybody on the track. Sheik easily getting by Decker on the straightaway. And, of course, later that year, a 1 and a 7 in Mount Morris gave him a second overall there and a third overall at Southwick. He turned out to be Cycle News Rider of the Month. Mike Gossler checking the time, checking his advisors as Steve Lampson is battling his own teammate. Here comes Sheik, number 29. Sheik, a very unassuming young man who works very hard away from the track, cuts inside to Steve Lampson, has the edge going into this corner now, and Lampson doesn't have the acceleration to come up close to retake the lead. Watch Sheik, hits that berm, cuts out of it early, and goes right around Lampson on the inside, a good clean pass. And just pulls away. Almost looked like he was riding a 250 through there. Scott Sheik, a great move by number 29. Coming out of the privateer ranks, this is his first year with Team Honda. Well, that's going to give him a boost of confidence, getting by the national champion, his teammate. He had to sit out the first few Supercrosses of the year until the East Coast was underway and looked pretty nervous at the first race, but yeah, he's been riding pretty good ever since. And the first national here, it's... Bad luck in the first moto, but it seems like he's got things under control here, and I think he's going to get stronger as the season continues. For Pedro Gonzalez fans, that was Pedro that was just uh, motoring at a very slow speed around the track when Scott Sheik just zipped right by him. Here's the second-place rider, Kevin Windham. We've still got plenty of time in this second moto of the 125s don't forget the 250s are coming up and boy that should be a great battle can jeremy mcgrath win his first victory of 1997 jeff emig might have something to say about that plus all the other riders i'm sure jeff will have a lot to say about it wyndham is just in a zone here all by himself you can't even see up to carmichael carmichael's gone and wyndham's got a huge lead over third place right now this is one of those times where you're just going, you know, I'd, I'd just really like to see the white flag. I don't, I don't want to be out here any longer. It's obvious I'm going to get second. Just end it. Should Carmichael uh, maintain his lead, of course, he would be the overall winner. And what a smile on his face I expect to see. Even a bigger smile on Mitch Payton's face. <laughs> Michael Craig, he gets the sign. You can. 17 minutes remaining in this moto. How's that grab you? Broken bone in your hand. He's this out there this is third. incredible. This is just incredible. Not only is Michael Craig in better physical shape than he's ever been before in his life, and he's proved that to us on the Supercross scene, but now we're seeing some courage and some uh, attacks on pain threshold that we've never seen before yeah, from Michael. More resolved than we've seen in the past. And this is going to give him a real boost, too, and prove to a lot of people who... Yeah, think he's kind of up and down and his head's not screwed on straight. Well, it, this, this should silence all those guys. And prove to a lot of people that said, hey, what, what's Honda of Troy messing with this kid for? Carmichael just pulling away. And look at the great fans. Pack stands here at Gatorback. Ricky Carmichael, our leader. You know, I've heard so much about this kid. And I never saw him ride until L.A., the first Supercross. And... And then when I first got a chance to see him ride, I was thinking, oh, I don't really like his style that much. I don't know. I, I'd heard so much about it. I had these preconceptions. And then saw him ride a few more times. And then, of course, the Atlanta Supercross, he won there. And it's really starting to grow on me. It's, it's a style all his own. Of course, factories have learned the hard way many times about overestimating a very popular and great amateur champion coming into the pro ranks. Uh, you have a 16 or 17-year-old you're dealing with, and maturity has a big play. It's been a long time, too, since we've seen anybody that that uh, was hyped up come into the pro ranks and just deliver right away. I mean, it, Bob Hanna was one of those guys, Rick Johnson, Lachine, oh, and now Tim Carmichael. Ferry. Tim Ferry down again. Very frustrating day for Tim Ferry, who calls this a home track as far as the motocross scene is concerned. 
Yellow flag is out. Ricky Carmichael still our leader and drawing, pulling away from Kevin Windham. Michael Craig in third. Sheik and Lampson rounding out our top five. Franks travel with them. It becomes a family sport. And uh, of course, right now, I don't think there's two people more proud of Ricky Carmichael as we go on the last lap. Oh, a little knack knack there. A little miniature knack knack. That's not a very big jump. I'm surprised he could still do it. Well, his arms aren't too long, and it, for a knack knack, you can really push yourself up there off that bar. Yeah, he did a little Edgar Torrenteros deal there. He put his feet up by the crossbar. He's got a lot of little tricks. And with this big of a lead, it's a great opportunity to show people he can do all this stuff. He's, I don't see any weaknesses in his game. Just well, the checkered flag, that's all he sees right now. Inexperienced, that's about it, but he's learning quick. A great ride for Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael, Wyndham, and Craig putting in a marvelous performance with a broken hand. Let's go to Davey. Congratulations, bro. Thanks. Uh, just like to thank my mechanic, Mitch. Uh, well, we got my bike run real good. The first, we, it wasn't running too good, but <coughs> now it is, and I'm stoked. I got a whole shot for once, and rode my own race. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You gotta be more excited that this is your first national win. It's playing your hometown fans. Did you ever yeah. think it was gonna happen this early? No, not really, but uh, after the first moto, I kinda built my confidence up a little bit and I felt good and I didn't get too tired. Just my arms got a little bit tired that moto, but I'm pumped right now to win in front of my hometown. Wait, wait, what felt better, the Atlanta Supercross win just last weekend, or this win here today at Gainesville? Probably the same. I'm, I'm stoked. For sure. Are your mom and dad here? Yeah, I don't know where they are, though. Look out, Daytona. Ricky Carmichael is coming your way next. Let's go back to Davey now. Kevin, I know you had some arm pump in the first one. The second one looked like you smoothed out a lot. Yeah, I felt a lot better. I uh, had time to go back and think of it and uh, think about it. And, you know, like I, I hate to keep harping on it, but, you know, sitting on the couch all week definitely didn't do me any good. And, uh, you know, just throughout the day, I feel like I got a little bit better and a little bit better. And, uh, Luckily, we have a break, so I'll uh, be able to go back and, and concentrate on what I was doing wrong. Ricky Carmichael taking a six-point lead on to round two of the motocross action at Hangtown near Sacramento. Steve Lampson in a good position right behind him. As the 125s celebrate, the 250s are getting ready. From Gatorback Park, the big guns are coming up next. <laughs> 